So what, what was your first experience of Monty Python? Well, that's a good question. Um, I don't know, because I was at a boarding school and we had no television at any time at the boarding schools I was at, two different ones. Never had a thing where, oh, can, you can watch some telly now in the evening. Didn't happen. So I got the tapes more. I must have seen it occasionally in the holiday times, but I don't really remember it. But I, I remember getting the tapes a lot. And I would listen to the tapes, and they had matching time handkerchief, and all those kind of uh, albums coming out. So that I, I think I was inhaling it that way first. Um, yeah, I had live at Drury Lane. Yes. And I listened to the sketches, stop the record, and sort of write, write them down. And I think at the same sort of time I had seen the Holy Grail on video, but at that time I'd never seen um, the TV series until it was maybe repeated on BBC Two in, in the 80s. So it was sort of like trying to piece it together because it's hard to explain to kids now, but in, in those days, before the internet, before you had access to things on YouTube, before you had uh, videos of everything, um, you know, you were sort of in the dark a bit as to the, as to, you know, what someone's work might be. So I sort of was trying to piece it all together. I'd seen 40 Towers as a kid, which I loved, but um, Monty Python wasn't repeated much. So I think I saw the movies first, but why do you think they are the comedy Beatles? Why do you think every comedian loses their I was going to say a rude word, but, you know, just loses it when they meet a python. Um, for me, they're the gods on Val, uh, uh, Valhalla or Olympus. Let's go with Olympus. So Mount Olympus and they're up there. Because, and you've got to add Gilliam to this as well. They took standard comedy. Hello, I've, you know, I've... <laughs> Do you have any bread? Yes, only bread. I mean, the cheese shop sketch. There's nothing in the cheese shop sketch except one joke. Do you have any cheese? No. Do you have any cheese? No. Do you have any cheese? You, could, you can cut that sketch immediately by saying, I'd like to get this cheese. Actually, we've got no cheese in here at all. But instead, it's three, four minutes old with bazooki players playing endless bazooki music. And it's so gentlemanly. I am someone who delights in the Terpsichore reviews and some of your best. To, you know, cheddar this thing. We haven't got anything. And then he shoots him. It's just so stupid. It's stupidity. It's silly and stupid, but highly intelligent behind it. This is the thing. And you've got to be, the thing is you've got to be so good at comedy to understand what they're doing. Mainstream audiences didn't get it because they wanted their comedy just laid in front of them. And what this, if to, to any alternative comedy, and I feel I've been influenced by that, you have got to have watched all the standard comedy with the standard jokes and understand when someone's destroying, playing with the medium. And that's what they did again and again and again. They've been through that straight. They just did the weirdest stuff. And initially it was purely silly and it gradually became more and more intelligent with the silliness. So Life of Brian being, you know, the masterpiece where there were comments on everything on, on on the schisms in, in religions, on the Messiah complex, on what, what have the Romans ever done for us? Oh, they've done everything. Well, yeah, okay, apart from everything. It's, you've got to know your comedy. That's what alternative music's about, alternative anything. You've got to know all the basic stuff and then see how it's being subverted by these guys. And then Gilliam there doing the visual overload, which is just, no one's ever done it since. 